Welcome to the Nonsensus. We are here in beautiful Sunnydale, Brookside, Shieldsbrook, Village, World, Michigan, America with Sarah Hall. And I'm not going to look over to the, the camera because there are no cameras because we're just organically having a conversation here at, at, your, at your table where, where you practice angel channeling. Where you? What do you do, Sarah? I don't, can I say that? I want to say that a little nicer. What 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 do you what do you do for a for a for a profession? How do you how do you help the, heal the world? Wow. Um. Well, I help heal the world essentially by talking to people and talking to angels and talking to spirit. What that entails is me tuning in to the angels and spirit guides that are connected to each individual. Everybody has angels, everybody has spirit guides, um, and giving that individual messages of love from the higher perspective that we get from the angels. So we're lower. We're, is that, is that how the... Yeah, you could, you could say that, not that lower means negative. Yeah. Um, and higher So it's not a vibratory means... hierarchy so much as, but it could be said that we're down, we're down, if the angels were to be up there, we're down here. Angels are considered to have a higher perspective because their perspective is very much aware of the unity of consciousness so whereas you and I are seeing things primarily through our individual perspective, mm -hmm. I am a personality, you're a personality, and we're seeing things through our lens and our filter, kind of like a little tunnel vision, um, angels and higher beings are aware of a collective perspective, and they get the bird's eye view of that collective perspective. So oftentimes they give great guidance or advice on where to go and what to do or how to see things differently because they can see things outside of the scope of, again, just the individual and even outside of our sense of time, if you will. <laughs> so the angels are a meta. Like, like if I were to look over to any one of these 73 cameras and be like, hey, like, you know, in, uh, like in the Muppet movies, there'll always be a meta movie, meta, meta Muppet moment in every meta Muppet movie where Kermit like looks over the camera and is like, yeah, because we're making a movie. So the yes. angels know that it's a movie or it, is it a movie? Yeah, I think they know. I think they have a much higher perspective of, um, you know, the trajectory of life. Like we see things very linearly because we are in a sense of time going by, right? We're, we have a sense of what our past is, what's happening right now, and, you know, what the future is. And from my work with the angels, my understanding is that they do see things out of out of time. They see things above it. They see things, you know, in a, in a higher perspective where they can see all of it happening at once. Therefore, they know where you're headed, and they're always going to tell you everything's going to be fine. You're 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 doing well, you know, and we'll help to steer you where you in the direction of the vibration you want to be in, kind of thing, because we can see it from above. Ooh, I needed that at like three thirty p.m. today. <laughs> you just we just get, I, I at least, I get so uh, frustrated with my own seamed failures when I'm in the muck of it, when I'm down here involved in situations. And uh, it would be really, really nice to, to have uh, a dialogue with uh, something, someone that is like, yeah, you know, it's all just happening. And, yeah. and I've had folks say that it's already all happened. And... And That's a way to say it. I mean, you could if you're if we think that time is all happening at once, and that you can stand outside of it. You could say, you know, it is. It has already happened in a sense, or it is all happening at once. Um, but what one thing that I think that is good about working with the angels, in the example you gave of, you know, I really could have used that, you know, a little bit earlier today, kind of thing, is that every single human being has the capability to tune into angels and to receive intuitive guidance and to communicate with them. Now, what would you say of, because I've, I've perceived this before of that you go into angel mode and that it's like the idea that we're interfacing through a human form, uh, it, it might be less spooky for you to to see to perceive an outside voice that is speaking to you as opposed to your uh, be, becoming I you know like because so, th there's a times where that's the language that I would use to describe because I've had times where I feel like uh, that wasn't me 
you know that was too i'm i'm too down here i'm too i'm too i'm not tuned in like i'm not dialed in like that uh so do, do is there ever a time i'll ask this is there ever a time where you yourself uh <laughs> get scared well sure i mean i think that um that happened for me particularly a little bit more commonly when I was at the beginning of trying to open and test out my intuitive gifts where I didn't always know what I was tuning into. And it was a little like, ah, you know, what was that real? Or, you know, that thing that felt like it was, you know, I, I saw, um, you know, light or I felt something coming off of somebody that's confusing or that can be scary. Um, but yes, to answer your question, when you tune in um, to connecting with angels or connecting any uh, to any spiritual being, it's like turning on a radio, such that when the radio is on and you know you're you're tuned in and you're focusing, then you can receive a lot of different things. And then when I'm not talking to the angels or when I'm not trying to delve into something um, within another person's energy field to know deeper about them, I turn that radio off and I function normally, you know, as, as I would throughout the day. So when you turn your radio on, when you turn your intuitive senses on and you focus on them essentially, because it's always picking up on things to a degree, but you're just aware, you're aligning with it when you're, when you're turning the radio on. Be sure about what channel you're tuned into. Mm -hmm. That was the pitfall for me when I was at the very beginning of opening up my spiritual gifts is that I was open to everything. I was like, I'm just open to the whole gamut of whatever energy, you know, wants to come in. I'll listen to it. I'll tune into it. And there were things that confused me. Sometimes, yeah, scared me, made me feel a little bit weird. But it was when actually I started to work with the angels that I realized there, you can make sense of this. There is a rhyme and reason to this, and this is very, very useful work. Um, I can choose just to hone in and tune on the angels only and let them be my bouncers, if you will, um, you know, holding holding space over the gateway like to see... Like bouncers at a club? Yes, like bouncers at a club. Yeah. See who, who they approve of coming into to communicate with. You know, I just had an experience of that whilst... This is getting meta. While you were saying that, I couldn't help but uh, start having the song play in my head. You turn the radio on, turn the radio off. Lisa Lo Loeb, right? Was it? You turn the radio on. <laughs> I think that's, yeah. Stay, uh, you say. Anyway, so I'm constantly, there's so much thought going, going on at any one time, and it's not, there'll be an octopus brain situation like that where, like, uh, I'm listening to you, but there's yes. also this thing going on in the head, and sometimes there's, like, triplets of different streams. It's like, uh, it's, it's tentacles. It's like, uh, it's, a, it's like the back of an entertainment center, how many yes. wires are coming out of my head at any time. And, uh, you know, neuroscientists don't understand what creates the driver of consciousness. There's nothing in there that, that is, that's, is you that is the you know like oh that that's where it is that's where the tiny little alien that powers the the whole flesh robot so we don't we don't understand what this is and i i often wonder wh what 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 which one is me and and then i've had experiences myself of i i'm i didn't say to myself channeling at the time but i had uh communications with something that was uh it didn't have the agency of a human body. Yes. I have ephemeral. Uh, what's other ways of saying that? Uh, I've had I've had disembodied. I mean, spirits is yes, the word spirits. that that they say. And I've had encounters with spirit things before. And but I also uh, I really like looking at it in the Jungian perspective of archetypes. And I also have had those same experiences and just been like, yeah, I was having an archetypal experience. Um, uh, you know, I I'm back I'm back to saying God for the first time since I was a child. Uh, well, I, I saying it with the full sincerity of a new definition of just like my interaction with the with the most important. Because um, it is interesting that we say hi, you know, because hi hi on the, like uh, like up the pyramid more important. It's like it's like how when I think uh, when I when I think of north, I think of up. Up mm -hmm. high north, yeah. and uh, and yeah, the way the reality, the universe is mapped out, it's really just omnidirectional, everythingness, mm -hmm. and if all of this, I mean, contemporary science would or is saying that this was all one tiny marble at one point, and then blew up and in, in, into all of this 
this fractured, fragmented, everything, every different thing that we experience. So it makes sense that it's all out there, and th for thousands of years we've been encountering the same folks, yes, sort of thing. Yes. <laughs> so when 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 did angels start being called angels? How old? is how, 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 how long have folks been, been hanging out with angels? Yes, well, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. My suspicion would be that it's before, uh, you know, even our historical mentionings of them. And interestingly, if you look at religious texts and spiritual ideas from cultures and religions all around the world, again, going back thousands of years in time, there is a common thread in which people talk about beings who are in, you know, what I might describe as a more highly evolved state, these higher loving um, beings that guide and that protect. Um, so, you know, in Buddhism, you, you might talk about the Bodhisattva, for example, and this is sort of similar to the idea of, of an angel. Um, this That's is That's the theme. one who uh, uh, achieved personal enlightenment, but instead of being whisked off to the heavens, is yes. going to hang out and, and try to And watch over the rest of the world until everybody gets up to that state as well. So it's kind of a similar idea. We've got these these loving higher beings watching over us sort of thing. Hmm. So And you see that repeated over and over again in many different... Text. Now, do they is what, so? I'm, I'm thinking of the, the what the antonym of of angel would be, but I also um, sometimes it seems to me like we might have invented the idea of bad, mm -hmm. um, well and good in that sense, like that that's a very human thing to look at things like this is the bad stuff that's ugly and I don't like it. This is the good stuff that makes me feel good and I'm and I'm I'm down with that. So is th is there an eternal war or is that one one canon of Christianity? Because I know that I was presented with angels before of that they they are they are the soldiers of yes. Jehovah <laughs> and then they fight the soldiers of Satan and yes. there's like this constant football game. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a, that's kind of an interesting allegory. Um, you know that I I think is definitely you know sort of unique and kind of misunderstood to you know part of Christianity. But let's go back a little bit further with it and just talk about duality for a second because the paradigm that we live in the world that we live in is one in which we perceive duality in all things we perceive hot and cold we perceive dark and light positive and negative and um, where we perceive the idea of angels what this represents and what we've described it as already is a very conscious being something with a very big conscious intentional reality that is very much focused in love and oneness we said a moment ago they are in a higher perspective because they are observant of oneness they are aware of oneness at all times the opposite of that would then be something that is less aware um, and when people talk about demons or they talk about you know lower spirits or earth-based spirits star. This is basically a, just a representation of vi a vibration of consciousness um, that is less aware. Um, and because it is less aware, it is focused on things such as separation, as well as on kind of knee-jerk reactions to things. So if you're, you have your intention and your freedom of choice, your free will really working and functioning really well, um, you make a separation between you and your reaction to something. So if you're angry and you're in what well, let's just describe it as more of an angelic state or more of a state of I'm more aware, um, you can choose not to punch or hit somebody. Um, but if we're thinking about being in this place where we're actually not in that, you know, kind of really aware exercising our free will, um, you are having knee-jerk reactions to things where maybe you get angry and then you punch something or then you shout sort of thing. That is what I would describe as sort of like the opposite or the other side of the polarity when it comes to thinking of higher consciousness versus what is, you know, lower conscious or what frequency are the angels living in versus what is the frequency at which maybe a different kind of spiritual being is living in demons, whatever you want to call it, I guess. Um, but do I particularly subscribe to the idea of there being, you know, angels and devils and a holy war kind of thing? I really believe that a lot of that is more useful when we think of it as an allegory um, for the idea of the human experience that we are having. having um, and that does isn't, you know, unique to human beings. I think that consciousness is 
all over the place and there are other beings that have consciousness as well obviously angels are beings and they have consciousness um but let's talk about human consciousness and the experience in which we can be in a state of incredible love or in which we can elevate ourselves to understand things in a really, really big, expansive kind of way. Um, or there's a part of us that struggles um, with the ego or with the part of ourselves that perceives fear and separation and things like that. And in a way, there's a little bit of an inner struggle or an inner battle that goes on between these frequencies, between these potentials that we have inside of us. Um, and I think on a spiritual path, it's one that basically creates a structure around that that allows us to maybe choose. I want to use my free will to be intentional and conscientious as a human being so that I can live a life that is empathetic, compassionate, and you know aware that I am one and part of a bigger um, whole, a bigger collective that I can support through you know good choices and um, you know a higher perspective. I do observe that. Uh angels and 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 demons and elves and dwarves and all these things really walk amongst us like uh well walk amongst us as as concepts too like uh like my idea of sin is missing your own mark uh like if i were to define what i think a demon is it's my momentum to keep failing myself it's my laziness i used to have this this idea of this lord lethargy that was the that was the the, the like the gargoyle that, that was this obese gargoyle that would climb on top of my chest when i was sleeping in the basement be like you don't need to climb on a bed till 4:30 in the afternoon stay with me where it's warm and it was just like i knew that that was a character but it was it got me angry enough to be like, "Get off me, lethargy! I'm gonna, I'm, I'm getting up at 11 a.m. today." <laughs> um, and it's just like whatever gets you out the door, and whatever, because we are just saying we're saying a bunch of words. But even with that, even with that, that's how I think about it. Um, yeah. That's how I intellectualize all these things. Yes. Still, I, I'll have the the etheric experience where I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's a good that's that's how I want to live my life is like I am open to the mystical because I keep experiencing it uh, now. Actually, I feel like I have more in depth experiences with more with the mystical, more mystical experiences, and more uh, convincing, and not like falling into my own uh, confirmation bias. Now that I am a little skeptical, because I mean we live in a the, the like. The, the the left brain science of the situation we're in is crazy magical. No one knows what we are, what this is, or where we came from. There's like there's theories, but it's it's understood to me that it's like you're you're in human form, and if you talk about it in a meta way, folks, uh, there's a lot of folks who will say you're weird for that. But I. I think it's so weird not to consider like, well, what? Well, first of all, what's even going on yes. here with this? And I keep coming back to that. For me, I always find the most important thing is, is what we do with yeah. it. So, and what gets me doing the best stuff is um, having the best language to talk to myself, and and then secondly, how I how I talk to the world. But to do the most significant things, we we need to be interpersonal. Um, yeah. But and it, if you're not interpersonally healthy and uh, optimistic, yeah. then it's very difficult to help the world. If your glass is 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 empty, yeah. uh, it must be actually overfloweth,ing in order to overfloweth. Um, <laughs> and that th- that that is what keeps me coming back to to church, uh, mm-hmm. uh, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, I like just. Just intellectualizing and rationalizing everything doesn't fill uh, the, 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 the hole in, in the heart that was once filled with uh, different, different changing uh, shapes of magic throughout my life. And now it's like it's the closest to it's just reality is so is so wild. Um, and so, so with that, that's a segue into so folks are troubled right now. Hell, I was troubled this afternoon. What, what do you say? What can you say? What would you say to someone who is having a rough patch here? Because it's, it. I mean, I could come up with all the language of why life is is a is a is a 
ominous prospect to be. I mean, you're you're in this. We're we're here. Uh, so what what do you what do you say to somebody who just woke up as a human and doesn't know what to yeah. do with that? And it's now. Well, I actually take inspiration um, in the question that you're asking from something that you said a moment ago. Um, when you mentioned the idea of there are so many different facets to my mind and so many different voices and so many different things that I can be aware of all at once and which one is me and how do I know which one is me? I think that's where we find some peace, some pearl of wisdom to give people is in that in answering that question, um, which one of those is me? Um, when you feel troubled, when anyone feels challenged by the difficulty of, of being in a human experience, my strongest advice is to breathe, become still, and to find your presence. And to kind of allow yourself to release the part of you um, that you know, would be attached to the idea of a feeling or a problem or a thought cycle that makes it seem like things are going wrong because none of those things are you. The answer to the question, which one of these things am I, is you're the part that doesn't change. The real you is the part that doesn't change. So all of the different feelings and thoughts and personality things and attributes that we add and subtract to our identity are not us. We are not our name. We are not our personality. We're not what we do. We're not what we think. We're not even what we believe. Um, we are the pure presence that exists observing behind all of that and in, in the gap between each of the thoughts and beliefs and everything. So that in that stillness or in that quiet in that observation there lies the true self and the amazing thing about practicing looking for that true self practicing looking for that pure awareness and pure presence that just observes all of this allows it to be and does not need to control it does not need to you know think anything of it and does not need to analyze it just observes it is that as soon as you get into that stillness, what you are observing transforms immediately. So if you're feeling pain, you'll see the pain dis uh, dissolve and uh, change into something completely different. And the more you sit in that space of quiet, um, in that you, that observer you, you'll notice that you are one with a force that is God, as we've you know, kind of reverently described one, is it. Is one with the same as being it? Yeah. You are it. And it does make sense that if it was this or nothing, that it's like, let's do the whole thing and let's be, and it's so cool to be like us now because this is pretty cool. Yeah. There's so much cool stuff that goes on now. Yeah. So I don't expect you or anyone, any of us to have the answer to this, but uh, let me just, let me sh it come shoot right from the hip. Uh, why, why do we incarnate as human beings? What are, what are we doing here? What's I love that question. I really love that question. It's funny. Um, because I get that question more often than you might think. I hear that that thought more often. The stress than you think. I imagine. Why? Yes. Why? Do we, why yes. This? Um, well, when we choose to live a human lifetime, we opt in to a lifetime where we know that there's going to be healing that's done. So just by um, virtue of incarnating, there is almost a sense of trauma or difficulty that we, we get just in coming here because we come into a reality, a collective reality, a collective human consciousness in which there are things that we'd see as diversity and suffering and that sort of thing. Well, it's um, shocking right at the beginning. I mean, you literally are born in blood. Yes. <laughs> uh, my, my dick was cut upon arrival. It's something that I always, whenever I'm feeling like, like I should be, um, have more uh, emotional uh, health and, and psychological stability. And then I remember my welcome party to earth was, <laughs> hey, new babies. <laughs> two, two snips. And then, and then, to pride me for my mother, put me in a in a in a, in a tank thing. Yeah. I'm surprised I'm able to ch show up yeah. day after day. Anyway, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh my god, I love it. Um, no, but it's true. Yeah, we we all kind of come in and we choose. Um, not only that we're going to enter into a collective human situation that through our personal perspective we can help to change, we can contribute to, but we also choose the, you know, the, the very personal things that we get even into the lineage that we choose. The, we choose the parents um, that now, we incarnate. I got with. it. I got how. How do you know that? <laughs> or who, <laughs> that where's, where's, where's that written? Because I, 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 I feel... Uh, 
I um, have had that you know when you say something that's true and you can tell when you're speaking the truth yeah. uh, and also when you when you when one hears the truth there's a feeling and I feel that way about like I consented to this I chose this but yes. how, how how do we know that you can read it in the sort of signature or the energetic record that is held in each and every person's soul. You can go in and track back into their lineage on their mother's and their father's side, and you can actually see the um, lessons or karmas, if you will, that feed right into this lifetime that that person is also dealing with. Now, that doesn't mean that you're limited by the sins of your father kind of no, thing. Or I that didn't know Ancestry.com went that deep. <laughs> <laughs> Did he need, this is a hair yeah. test or a case of mouth swab? That's... Yeah, it's, I wish it, well, it, you know, it's a little energy swab. And I, act, I think that if you're intuitive enough, you can kind of detect it. I don't know if it. I want that printout. Yeah, I I, yeah. I think I just, I'll just live in the mystery. Yeah, but the thing is, is we choose these things. And again, they don't limit you, but they offer you a potential to see those things that maybe you uh, got from your parent and to do better than those things or to heal those things, to forgive those things. So here's, here's a question or here's a tangent that gets into a question. I, I hear, uh, spiritual communities, uh, say healing a lot. And it's, uh, th there was a time where it occurred to me, like, I want to stop using that language in my head because if I'm healing, then that means something went wrong. And I, I want to be looking at this as I'm having a whole experience. And almost every trauma that I've ever had ends up playing into my story as what gave me my superpower. Uh, my uh, s scars become m my uh, magical abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I, I want to so speak on this. We're, we're, we can say that we're born to heal, but also it could be perceived that we're born and then things happen early on, and we're healing from those the whole time. That's how psychology approaches it. Mm -hmm. That your your whole adult life is pretty much trying to to figure out what happened to you in the first ten years, uh, particularly the first four. That most people who are all effed up are all effed up because of what happened in the first. In, in, in their initial experiences here. Um, so is it like, I mean, are we born wounded? Is it, is the, is this like, do you think this is a process that I, a lot of folks say, and I've said before, like, I want to heal the universe. I want to heal reality. Uh, what, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, uh, and why, and why have this, that sounds like, uh, original sin sort mm. of. You are describing something that I think that best can be referred to as the archetype of the journey of the wounded healer. The journey of the wounded healer. The journey of the wounded healer is the human journey. It is the human journey. We are wounded because we come into this world and we experience the ego. We experience things, you know, like fear and separation and, um, you know, all, all of the seeming adversity that we have. And yet at the same time, we are the healers as well. We have the power to heal all of that. Um, so you experience the ego from the inside of you, and then you go within yourself and you can transcend the ego, the ego through personal healing. And that personal healing um, creates collective healing. It brings healing out into the world that makes an enormous, beautiful, beautiful difference and it's accessible to all of us. Um, yeah. So you're a human being who goes into angel mode and can uh, be conscious of uh, these other dimensions or perhaps lenses, way of looking at the same reality that everybody's experiencing. And that's the interesting thing I find about, uh, I'm tangenting off, but uh, that folks who, who think and speak super spiritually all the time will talk about it as if there's unconscious folks who are non-participant in the thing. So if, I mean, if this, if the spiritual realm, if those dimensions are in play, then aren't they in play for everyone, regardless of if you're, yes. you know, so, but what I was getting at, so you're a human being and you've, you, you are interfacing through that and that is, uh, is, is suffering and yeah. confusion. Um, how do you, or do, do you feel the need that when you then present yourself to someone to, to, be therapist to be healer to them uh to to like all right i gotta i gotta have it together you know yeah. because uh 
I mean, I don't, I don't have to because I'm, I'm, I'm a silly person. But like, how do you, uh, how do, how, how do you, uh, how do you do that? <laughs> I love, love, love this question. So, in order to be a healer, whether to yourself or to others, you don't have to be in a perfect state. In fact, I would argue that that's not the point of human life to get into some perfect place where you are beyond, um, you know, problems or you're beyond experiencing challenges. So contrasts are a part of the human experience. And when you sign up to live a human experience, you never stop being human. You're faced with contrasts in this human world that it's okay not to be quote unquote perfect. It's how you respond to challenges and difficulties that makes you maybe a good teacher or maybe a good healer. So in other words, it's sort of like surfing. Like there are waves that go up and down throughout life. Sometimes we feel really great and everything is perfect. Everything is working for us. And the next day, you know, your house burns down or you get in a car crash or, you know, somebody dies or, you know, there could be even a little annoyance that comes on your path. And it's just just about learning to ride those waves such as they such that they don't drown you it reminds me of of the the ancient epic poem uh where there's a line that says uh so no one told your life was gonna be this way your job's a joke you broke your love life's the way it sometimes it does seem like we're always stuck in se- second gear uh, and i've had entire entire days uh, stretches of weeks, an entire month. Uh, some, sometimes it seems like it isn't even my year, but yeah. you know, uh, there is something that always seems like it is there for me. 